Greetings everyone, this is the video you've all been waiting for where we're going to learn about the three basic gas laws. And so we're going to go ahead and get started here today. The first one we're going to talk about is Boyle's Law. Boyle was a scientist in the 1800s and uh, what he did is he experimented around with pressure and volume of, of various gases. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause this video and take a look at this link at the top right and watch this this video. It's only a minute or so long and then come back and, and come back to these notes. So go ahead and take a look, uh, take a minute and watch this really interesting video. Okay, now that you've come back and, and you watched that video, um, that video deals with two variables that Boyle also dealt with and that was the pressure and volume of various gases. And so you'll notice in the video when the 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 air was being sucked out of that um, out of that region of space that the pressure was going down and as the pressure was going down and it looked at the marshmallows they started to expand their volume increased and so as the pressure went down the volume increased we call this relationship an inverse proportionality and so those were inversely related and, and the opposite would be true if the pr pressure went up pressure went up then the volume would get would get smaller if, if they started uh, pumping that, that dome back up with all kinds of, of, of gas, then the pressure would increase and so um, the volume would decrease, the marshmallows would get smaller. And so Boyle did some experiments quantitatively looking at these two variables and he noticed that whenever he multiplied those two, pressure times volume, it didn't matter what pressure or volume he had, he always was able to get the same constant number when, when he took the product of those two things. And so looking at what's, what was going on here, if both of these numbers multiply together, to, let's just say uh, K was 100, and my pressure was 10, and my volume was 10. Okay, so I took 10 ATM, 10 liters, and they always equaled 100. Well, if pressure all of a sudden went up, let's say pressure was now 100, in order to still equal 100, volume would have to go down by a proportional amount in order to still equal out to that same number 100 and so as one variable increased the other variable was decreasing and he saw this inverse relationship so he took this uh, this idea here and he said okay well if I have some pressure and some volume at one set of conditions and I mess with it and I change the conditions I change the pressure of the volume after I change it they're still going to be equal to K or still going to be equal to that constant number and so some new pressure and some new volume, we'll just call them P2 and V2, those are going to be equal to the product of the pressure and the volume uh, in the first set of conditions. And so this is Boyle's law, and it relates pressure and volume of gases um, for changing conditions as long as, and this is what Boyle had to do, he keeps the other variables constant, such as temperature and the number of moles uh, of gas. And so when he saw this uh, graphically, if we were to look at this, we have pressure and volume. Um, as the pressure went down, okay, so close down to this end, the volume was high. And then as the pressure increased, the volume decreased. And so we saw this inverse relationship. Uh, so the next uh, law we're going to talk about is called Charles' Law. I'd like to take, you a moment, uh, take a moment, pause this video, and go look at this, uh, this video on the top screen as you watch Charles' Law in action. Okay, now that we're back from that video, um, I have a little balloon animal up here. And what was going on here is, is if we, these balloons were dropped in liquid nitrogen, really went, really got cold. And so as the temperature was was uh, decreasing dramatically, the volume of the of the of the gas inside went down dramatically as well. And when the temperature started to heat back up again, the volume increased back to what it originally was. And so Charles was a scientist in the 1800 and he also played with temperature and volume of gases. And he noticed a little bit different relationship. This is where we have an inverse relationship where one variable goes down, uh, the other one goes down. Excuse me, this is direct. A direct relationship. Okay, they're directly related. And so when I look mathematically what was going on, he noticed that a given volume of gas and as a given temperature when he divided those two, it always equals some constant value. Um, and if I think about what's going on here, my analogy a second ago, if K were 100, and normally volume is 10, temperature is, let's say it was 10K, um, if volume goes up, let's say volume is all of a sudden 100, volume goes up, well, temperature was 10, now it has to go down in order to equal that same value. And so 
this was a direct relationship. They had to increase both or decrease both. And so when Charles looked at one set of conditions, he noticed that when he changed a set of conditions to some other volume and temperature, those were always going to be equal. And so this is Charles' law. And he definitely had to keep those other values or variables constant, such as the pressure and the number of moles of gas. And so looking at this graphically, what's going on here, temperatures on the x, um, and then we have pressure on the y. As the temperature went up, um, volume, <laughs> As the temperature went up, the volume went up. As the temperature went down, uh, the volume went down. So low temps had low volumes, high temps had high volumes. And we see this direct relationship. The last one I'd like to talk about is Guy Lussac's law. Go ahead and take a minute to pause and watch this little video. Okay, now that you watch this video, we have this egg that's in this uh, kind of bottle thing. And the match throws in there. And then as soon as the, the light goes out, the temperature starts to cool. And as that temperature goes down, what's happening is the pressure inside is actually decreasing. And as the pressure decreases, um, it's trying to suck in air to make up for that pressure difference. And in the process, it ends up sucking this egg down, uh, down at the bottom. So as the temperature went down, the pressure went down. If all of a sudden we could somehow heat it, heat it up again and put the egg on the top there, the temperature went up, the pressure would go up, and it would shoot out that, uh, shoot out that egg. So Guy Lussac's law, he looked at um, pressure and temperature, and he noticed that they were also directly related, that direct proportion. And so pressure divided by temperature always equals some constant value. And so when he looked at some uh, gas that was at some pressure and some temperature, when he changed the pressure, and there was a new temperature or vice versa, we change the temperature, there's a new pressure, they will always be equal to each other. Assuming, of course, the other variables were constant, and that would be um, our pressure. Uh, this is going to be, we need to keep our volume constant. And then, of course, uh, the number of moles. Okay. And so, looking at this graphically, it's very similar to the last one. As the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up, as temperature goes down, pressure goes down. So low temps have low pressure, high temps have really high pressure. And so these are the three, uh, the three gas laws. And so we're going to be using these in the next couple of days, and I hope that this video was helpful.